Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about roof trusses. Okay, so the next topic in our discussion is roof truss. So mainly we are going to use this roof truss in industrial building, okay, for roof covering, clear. For supporting the roof covering material we are going to use a truss, that truss is known as roof truss and mainly we are going to see this roof truss in industrial building not only in industrial building for a rooftop and so many areas we are going to use these roof trusses but mainly we are going to use it in industrial building so one such a truss one such a roof truss i am going to show you now Okay, this is the roof truss. So actually this type of truss is known as fink truss. The name for this type of configuration of truss is known as fink truss. So this is known as rise of the truss. H. And this is known as pan of the truss. L. Clear. And these are known as joints. And of course, we know the pro property of truss. So, truss is a member which is subjected to axial forces only. And the load will act at the joints or nodes. Okay, that is the point we are going to discuss in stru stru structure analysis. Clear. So, if you observe here, there exists some terminology. So, the terminology is pitch. So, pitch is equal to rise by span this is the definition of pitch so this is rise and this is span so rise by span is known as pitch next slope tan theta so slope is tan theta so obviously tan theta is equal to opposite side by adjacent so opposite side is h that is rise and adjacent is span by 2 clear this is the pitch and slope and this pitch depends on so the pitch of the truss depends on type of roof covering type of roof covering material and ventilation ventilation and light requirement light requirement so now pitch of truss depend upon uh, roof covering material obviously on the top of this roof truss we are going to provide a roof covering material so now this pitch depend upon that roof covering and that to ventilation and then light requirement so now pitch depend upon all these parameters and based on the value of pitch the pitch can be classified as the three types so those are small pitch okay small pitch so this small pitch should be less than 1 by 12. So if the value of pitch is less than 1 by 12, then it is called a small pitch. Next, medium pitch. So if pitch value lies in between 1 by 12 to 1 by 12, 1 by 5, then it is known as medium pitch. So then next large pitch. So if pitch value is greater than 1 by 5, then it is large. 
So these are the classification of pitch depending upon the value. So if it is less than 1 by 12, small pitch. If it is 1 by 12 to 1 by 5, medium pitch. Greater than 1 by 5, it is large pitch. So take it down. So take it down the diagram clearly and to show the span of the truss and rise. And this is called as fin truss. And the pitch, what is meant by pitch, the definition. And slope and then the things here. So write down all the things. Okay, next. So next, the type of truss to be used. Okay, type of truss to be used as a roof truss depend upon this pitch. Okay, so now for small pitch, which type of truss we are going to use? For medium pitch, which type of truss we are going to use? And for large pitch, which type of truss we are going to use? Let us see. Okay, so I am going to rub this. So here I am writing. Type of truss depends on pitch and span. Okay, type of truss depends on pitch and span. So obviously for large, for large pitch. So we go for fin truss. So we go for this type of truss. So for large pitch, we go for fin truss. Okay, next, second, medium pitch. So for medium pitch, we go for track truss. So if you see the diagram of track truss, so it is, let us see. So this is the practice. So for medium pitch, we go for the practice. Next. Third. Small pitch. So for small pitch, we go for bar and truss. So bar and truss is like this. So this is the iron truss. So obviously depending upon the pitch, the type of truss can be decided. So as we discussed, for large pitch, we go for fin truss. So this is the fin truss. And next for medium pitch, we go for plant truss. So this is the plant truss. And for small pitch, we go for barren truss. So take it down. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the total setup of industrial building. Okay, total setup of a top of industrial building. It means here in this diagram, I'm going to show you the number of trusses and then the purlins, roof covering and everything I'm going to show. Okay. So this is one truss, the, the main truss or the front truss. Clear. So now this is the line which is which is joining the topmost points of the all the trusses. Okay. So this is the line which is joining 
So this is the line which is joining the topmost point of the all the trusses. So now this line is known as ridge line. Okay, that is the line which is joining the topmost points of all the trusses. Clear? So this is one truss and obviously we are going to place one more truss here. And one more truss here. So like that we are going to place truss. And if you observe, this is the spacing of the truss. Spacing, so this is the spacing of the truss. Spacing of the truss, we represent with small L. Agree. And the bottom line, which is joining the bottom most points of the truss, is known as eave. So this line is known as eaves. Topmost line is known as ridge line, and this line is known as eave. And the spacing, so this is one truss, and here we are going to place another truss. Agree. So that this is the spacing between the truss and then exactly. Okay, exactly at the node or the joint, we are going to place a beam which are known as purlins. Okay, purlins are the beams which are placed between roof truss and roof covering material. That is known as purlin. So, angle and channel mainly. So, mainly angle and channels are used as a purlin. But whenever there is a beam, mostly we are going to use I section. Agree or not? But here in this case, I section is not uh, suggested or recommended as a purlin. The reason it is subjected to less loads in comparison with the normal beam. So, that is why all the three cross sections I am going to show here. This is the angle which is provided as a early. Okay, this is the angle and here. So this is the channel which is provided as a early and here. So these are the purlins. So this is the cross section. Okay, these are the cross sections. Okay, on the top of these purlins, we are going to place roof covering. Okay, this is a roof covering. So this is roof covering. And these are purlins. But usually channel and isaac angle are used as a purlin. So if in the longitudinal view, if I want to show the purlin, so this is a purlin. So with the blue color. Okay, so with the blue color, what I am going to draw are purlin. Clear. So in this diagram, if you want to show, so these are trusses. Trusses and these are purlins. On longitudinal view. So on this side, I have shown the cross sectional view, and on this side, I have shown the length view. So from this, we can say the span of the purlin is equal to spacing of the truss. Do you agree or not? So span of the purlin. Span of the purlin. Okay, span of the purlin is equal to spacing of the truss. So, which is obviously equal to L. Agree. So, that is the spacing of the truss. Clear. And the members on which these purlins are rested, it means this, what this is called as top cut. This total is called as top cut of the roof truss. So these top card members are called as principal rafter. So what I have highlighted with the red color. So this is a total member, a top card is known as principal rafter. Principal rafter. So obviously principal rafter is nothing but main compression member. Main compression member.
Okay, so these purlins are placed on the principal rafter, or you can say the top card of the truss. So obviously they are called as main compression member of principal rafter. So take all these things. Okay, so now let us see the provisions regarding this uh, spacing of the truss. Okay, provisions regarding the, let us see the provisions regarding the spacing of the truss. So I am going to drop this diagram. Clear. So everything is clear, ridge line, eaves, and the spacing of the truss, purlin, and then roof covering everything. Okay, everything they are shown in this diagram itself. So spacing. Spacing of truss, L. So for this, the provision is there, it should be in between L by 3 to L by 5. We know what is L, L is the span of the truss. Okay, now spacing of the truss should vary in between L by 3 to L by 5. So where L is span of the truss. Agree. So for economical spacing, so there is one condition for economical spacing. For economical spacing, there is one, there exists one condition. The condition is cost of truss is equal to twice the cost of purlin plus cost of roof covering. So this is the condition for economical spacing. So this we represent with T. So cost of purlin T is equal to twice the cost of purlin 2P plus R. So this is the condition for economical spacing of a truss. Take it down. Okay. So this is about the provision. Now the important thing in the roof truss is calculation of loads on the roof truss okay on the roof so what are the different types of loads that the roof truss is subjected to and how to calculate those loads okay what are the provisions regarding those loads let us see so which is very important in this roof truss 